Hi, I'm Blythe Nielsen, Associate Professor in the Biology Department at the University of British Columbia Okanagan Campus. I specialize in teaching undergraduate students about human anatomy and physiology. I wanted to show you five anatomy aha moments that happen in my lectures and labs when I use Visible Body's 3D anatomy models. These models really help students instantly understand the architecture of difficult anatomy. It's a lot easier to understand how form and function interact when you can see them in 3D. Let's start at the top of the body with the skull. You can make and save your own views. But they make it easier by offering a bank of pre-made views. I've selected one of those. Here's the impact of 3D models. The branches of the cranial nerves are beautifully simple when you can look at them from all directions. By hiding and then showing the mandible, it becomes clear how the jaw is innervated. I can use the system view to hide the entire skeletal system. And that's a beautiful view. My favorite bone is the sphenoid, but it's a bit difficult to see in an intact skull. By fading the skull and then highlighting the sphenoid, students can see exactly how it articulates with the rest of the bones. I can also hide the rest of the bones and then focus on the foramina. The microanatomy of the eye can be quite difficult, but the structures are much more understandable when I lecture using this model. First I'll hide some of the muscles, then I'll hide the vitreous humor and some other structures. In this view, we can clearly see how the optic nerve connects through the back of the eye. If they want a definition of one of the structures, they simply highlight it, then click the definitions box. They can also hear the term pronounced by clicking on the pronunciation box. Ciliary processes. There are many fine details in this model for students to look at. I use this in presentations, but of course students can go back and use this model to review if a student hasn't learned all the terms and pronunciations, he or she can quickly get them this way by selecting the definition box. Next, I want to look at the spinal cord. These 3D models offer a great way to help students visualize how the spinal nerves exit the cord and their relationship to the vertebrae. It's valuable to be able to show these 3D images to students because textbook images, lab specimens, or models always have to leave something out in order to show a specific structure. With these models, you can take things away, then put them back, hide them, fade them, and rotate them in order to really understand relationships. If I select this vertebra and zoom in, then hide it, we can view the spinal cord underneath. By selecting one of the ligaments, I can use the breadcrumb trail up above, select all of the spinal ligaments, and hide them all at once. Next, I'll hide the dura. Here we can easily see how the spinal roots originate further up the spinal cord than where the spinal nerve exits the vertebral column. This is a great way to show students the relationship of spinal nerves with the bones of the spinal column. The ability to zoom in and out to show levels of organization gives students great perspective. My students are often confused about scale and magnification. This app gives them the ability to quickly orient themselves and see, for example, how roots become nerves and then nerves form branches. Let's move on to the digestive system and look at some organs. Instead of using a series of flat images on PowerPoint slides to show the ducts that run through accessory organs and into the small intestine, I now use 3D views like this one. I can select the common bile duct and then the head of the pancreas to show the relationship between the ducts. If I want to highlight the whole pancreas, I can use multiple select or I can use the breadcrumb trail up at the top and select the entire organ. I can fade it so we can see the relationship between the ducts. I'll go back to the digestive system now and hide the peritoneum and the omentum in order to get the view I want. First I'll hide part of the liver. If I select the stomach and fade then hide the top layer, I can easily see the three muscular layers of the stomach wall and the stomach lining.
I can add the urinary system and we can look inside the kidney. And now the last example. Here's a view I used to communicate the relationship between the circulatory and respiratory systems working together. Now in this view, it's hard to see the aortic valve, so I'll use the search feature down here at the bottom. I just type in aortic valve, and then select go to, and it will take me right there and highlight it for me. By using refresh view, I can go back to the beginning. Now let's add pulmonary circulation. Now I'm going to choose add, so we'll add it to this model. Next, let's add the entire respiratory system. You can clearly see the two lobes of the left lung and the three on the right lung, and the cardiac compression that makes room for the heart. Now let's add the diaphragm. And finally, we can add the thoracic cage. I take my iPad to my lectures and show these models and animations on the big screen. Later, in the lab, they can use iPads there to review and explore the app as much as they want. They can review definitions, hear pronunciations, look at the relationships among different organ systems, etc., etc. The bottom line is, being able to manipulate the images gives students a hands-on connection that makes learning more personal. This app is intuitive and it's so easy to use. It's beautifully produced and simple to navigate. Students love it, and they're immediately engaged as soon as they start using the app. It helps students learn difficult concepts in a fraction of the time it used to take, and I feel like I'm really helping them learn in a more personalized, individual way using this tool.